Okay, as usual, let's first start off with the deck. The deck's length is a little bit over 41 inches in length and the width is a little over 10 inches. They did upgrade the grip tape to foam grip tape from the original Ares X1 and the concave is still the same, slight W concave and the edges of the board keep your feet locked in while carving. It does have that kind of baking tray design but it's not as deep dish and in depth like the Meepo Hurricane. They're handcrafted, super durable, premium T700 3K carbon fiber deck it is definitely different from all the others. But what I like the best is the underbelly of the deck. The deck underbelly is a football design pattern shape and it's quite thin. When it's really thin like this and yet you're packing a massive battery with big wheels, you have incredible amount of clearance. When the structural design is this sturdy and gives you so much clearance, the riding capabilities are endless. Check it out. Now let's talk about these wheels. These wheels are seven inch, 180 millimeter tubeless vacuum tires. The contact patch is about 65 millimeters in width. And when I first saw these online, I thought something without a tube wouldn't have that great of grip and not that good of comfort. Boy, was I wrong. The grip is fantastic on these wheels, but not only is the grip very good, but they're actually not too big and they're not too small. I think eight inch is too big for this board, just like their first Aries X1. So I think this size is just right for this board. As for the puncture resistance levels, I still have not had a flat tire yet. Now let's talk about the trucks. The trucks are a little bit updated from their last Aries X1. These are Precision CNC 2.0 traditional Kingpin trucks, about 13.8 inches in width. They're extremely durable, extremely stable, and to be honest with you, probably the best looking trucks from any two-in-one production board I have seen yet. I also never seen any of these trucks fail online either. Now let's talk about the remote and the ESC. This is the same remote and same ESC that's in the Ace Deck Nomad N1. This is a 3.0 90 amp ESC. And between this and the Nomad, these are the most powerful production boards under two grand that I've ever ridden in my Eastgate career. I also really like how Ace Deck is offering these protective shells for your remotes. They also come in numerous amounts of colors. So if you have a few different Ace Decks like myself and you wanna know which remote goes to which board, this is kind of a cool way to know which board is which and to also protect the remote itself. Now, just like all the other Ace Deck remotes, you have a full data screen that shows you all your information, your speed levels, your total miles, your trip, your riding modes, your battery level for the remote, your battery level for your actual board. And with eight clicks, you have a hidden back menu to customize the entire board's performance the way you want. Now let's talk about the motors. These are 6384. 150 kV, 3,500 watt motors each, all-terrain gear drive. Now, like I mentioned, in case you're wondering about the performance, this has the same exact performance as the ASTEC Nomad N1. For those that you haven't seen, I did two videos comparing the ASTEC Nomad to a few other boards. If you haven't checked those out, go ahead and check out these videos. I'll put the link in the description. Hopefully you can see that. It's an E for eco mode. All right, so let's try eco mode first. One, two, three, go. Eco mode. One, two, three, go. Damn, that's eco mode. That's crazy. Brake test at 85%. At 10 miles per hour. One, two, three, brake. Very good brakes. I think 85% is perfect. It's aggressive, but not too aggressive. Okay, S plus. Hopefully I don't kill myself. All right, one, two, three, go. Oh, shit. Holy fuck. 
it's so scary, man. Ever since after my accident, it's scary. <laughs> I don't know if I could do this one. One, two, three, go. Yeah, I can't do it. Oh. I pushed it a little bit, but I couldn't launch it the way I want to. Oof. All right, break in an S plus mode. One, two, three, break. Nice. Like that said, that 85% is a perfect middle ground. Okay, attempt to high speed test, see how it goes. Now I'm still not 100% comfortable going super fast, so I know the board still had more left in it, but I had 32.3 miles per hour. All right, here we go. Giant hill test on the Ace Deck Aries X1. S plus mode, one bar gone. Let's do it. All right, I'm not even gonna lie. I didn't even hit full throttle. That's how powerful this was. It was just too much. Let's check the rider up. Yeah, so like I mentioned, I still didn't even get full throttle through that hill and I got 27 miles per hour. It could easily probably do 29, 30 miles per hour up that damn hill. Now for this massive battery inside this skinny ass deck, this is a 14S 4P Samsung 40T cells, 16 amp hour, 828 watt hour battery. Now that's super impressive putting that kind of a battery inside such a sleek design. As for range, I'm a 155 pound rider. The temperature was about 58 degrees Fahrenheit. I rode mostly in S mode and sometimes in S plus mode. I did 32 miles of range doing off-roading and some street riding. Constructive criticism. The location for the charging port is awesome, but the charger itself is only a four amp charger. I think that's too small for the setup and takes over five hours to charge. Even my old Evolve GTRs that are 504 watt hours have four amp chargers. So I truly think Ace Deck should have their six amp fast charger as their standard charger when you purchase the board. Now my biggest problem with the board is the actual rim slash hubs. You cannot change the actual tires with these rims because the actual valve cap stem is a part of the rim itself so you cannot remove it therefore you cannot change your own tire slash tube and put your choice of tires on these rims i get it i understand i just really wish i could make my own choices when it comes to tires now these are not the standard bushings the standard bushings they come with are 95 a's with these high cup wall washers i think ace deck should include a variety of bushings soft medium and hard with the purchase of an aries or a nomad now let's talk about quite possibly the best thing about this board, the price. They're having a special sale right now, only $15.99, and with our discount code, it goes all the way down to $1,574. This is by far the most powerful board under $1,600. Now let's talk about the new Element CNC 2-in-1 gear drive kit. Now this gear drive kit will work for the Aries X1 and also the ASEC Nomad gear drive. It comes with an easy swap design, for Kegel and ABEC. The material that ASEC is using is 6061 aluminum, and the gear drive type is alloy steel wheel, and the gear type is alloy steel, and also alloy steel helical for maximum durability. Now with the wheel variety, you can go as low as 90 millimeter wheels, and you can go up to 155 millimeter AT wheels. Since the gear drive kit is a little bit smaller than the standard gear drive, they give you brand new bash guards. And in my personal opinion, it looks better. All right guys, S plus mode, been riding around for about three miles, so not exactly a full battery. So S plus mode, the new gear drive, the new Mad Wheel 105s, on go. One, two, three, go. Ooh, god damn. Whew. That's tough, dude. Damn, that shit is scary. Again, I'm only 155 pounds. I might have to ease into a little bit. I'm gonna do a little bit of a roll. One. Two, three, go. Oh, damn. Oh, wow. That's super powerful. Oh. Doing 12, 13 miles per hour. One, two, three, pull. Woo! 
God damn. It just keeps pulling. I'm going up a slight hill now. One, two, three, pull. Damn! Woo! Okay, guys, acceleration test. New Mad Wheels, new Ace Deck Element 2 in 1 gear drive kit. This is scary. On go. All right, one, two, three, go. Damn! Holy moly! Holy Jesus. That was crazy. Oh, yeah, that's nuts. All right, let's do a brake test. Doing like 12, 15 miles per hour. Yeah, 14. One, two, three, brake. Oh, wow. Holy moly, that was really tight. That was really good. Okay, guys, top speed. I'm going to just do a rolling start, S plus mode. I've been riding about four miles, so it's not exactly a, a, a full battery, but it's, it's pretty much up there. All right, one, two, three, let's go. Oh, my God. This keeps going. Holy moly. Oh, man. Now watch. I'm doing 20 miles per hour, right? That one's going to gun it. That's one, two, three, go. Damn. Oh. <laughs> Yo, this thing's a beast. Yo, that's nuts. The mid-range power on this is freaking crazy. I'm pretty sure it's not made for top speed. It's made for that mid-range power that's crazy off the line as well, but not really top speed. Let's check the rider out. Now, in my opinion, 30 miles per hour is plenty, especially on a street setup, but no other board I've ever tried had this power and has gotten me to 30 miles per hour so quickly. Now let's talk about the brand new version two Mad Wheels. Just like the version ones, they are super soft, super grippy. These are true 105 millimeter in diameter, and these are 70 millimeters contact patch. Now in my personal opinion, for the money right now at $119, there's no better street wheel with this grip, range, and comfort. Now to the left are the new version two, and to the right are the original version ones. To the right, you can see they're actually a little bit smaller. They were actually never originally 105 millimeters in diameter. They're actually around 102 to 103. So now with the version two, you get a true 105 millimeter in diameter wheel. Now you can also notice on the top is a version two. You can see it's a little bit wider as opposed to the bottom version one. The top version two is 70 millimeters in contact patch when the bottom one is 65 millimeters in contact patch. Now what's also upgraded with the version two is one more hole, giving it more dampening and more comfort for you when you're riding over bad roads. As for these mad wheels taking on terrible roads, it's pretty simple. These wheels are made for this. Check it out. Now, since this has a little bit more cushion and it has a wider contact patch, this is where it truly impressed me even more. Pushing the carb on this terrible road and it holding traction the entire time. Any other street wheel here would 100% break traction. So not only will you have that comfort while riding over bad roads, but you can actually push the board and still have fun and maintain traction.
Now for my favorite part of these wheels is the grip. Now to me, grip is extremely important because I am constantly pushing the carve on streets. And when I push the carve on streets, I wanna maintain that carve ability and maintain my traction. But there's more to it than just maintaining the traction itself. You need to have that predictability because if you don't feel that predictability under your feet and you think you're maintaining the carve when you're pushing it really hard and you actually break the traction without trying to actually break the traction, you can really hurt yourself. But with these wheels, you truly don't have to worry about that. Now, what also makes these wheels so grippy is they come standard stonewash, meaning there's no break in period. As soon as you unwrap these and throw them on your board, the surface area on the wheel is ready for maximum grip. A lot of the times with standard urethane, you have to ride anywhere from 30 to 40 miles and have a break in period in order to have the maximum grip from a traditional street wheel. As for range, utilizing the new Mad Wheels and the new Element 2-in-1 gear drive kit. I was truly carving very hard in S plus mode most of the time. And then the second day of the range test, I was riding mostly off-roading. And when I was off-roading, I was really pushing the board hard. Now, for those of you who don't know, off-roading causes more friction. More friction equals less range, especially when you keep doing burnouts in the sand in S plus mode. I'm a 155 pound rider and the temperature was about 62 degrees Fahrenheit outside. I got 35.4 miles of range utilizing the new Element 2-in-1 gear drive system and the Mad Wheels 105 millimeter version two. Now, a few things worth mentioning. When you switch the street wheels, at least with the 105 millimeters on this new CNC 2-in-1 gear drive kit, you're gonna sit pretty low. So since the gear drive itself sits pretty low along with the trucks and the bash guard, just expect a lot of scrapes and scratches. Okay, so my number one complaint about the board, just like the Nomad, that dead band area. If I'm going down a slight hill and I just wanna coast it, let it go, and then the road flattens out and I need a throttle, it's tough to find where that 15, 20 miles per hour mark is that I need to meet that same speed. I need to catch up to that same speed inside the scroll wheel. Now, I've heard people online dial down this, dial down that. I did some tweaking on the Nomad and I didn't really see much of a difference. I think it was more of a difference off the line from a start. I don't really mind that too much. Of course, I don't prefer it, but when it's a dead band off the line from a complete stop, I get that. I get why they did that. They don't want it to just be crazy right off the line. But when I'm coasting, like I do all the time, whether I'm dancing or I'm going down a hill or I'm trying to slide or I'm just simply cruising, I gotta find that throttle part where the thumb wheel needs to match. It's tough to find. So that's really my only complaint. Now, something else worth mentioning, this gear drive kit does not have an AT adapter yet, but in December, they will have this available. Final thoughts. Now, the Aries X1 2023 gear drive edition is just a monster of a board. So if you're looking for something that's not big and chunky and bulky, and you need maximum performance, even if you're a bigger rider because the max load is 440 pounds. So if you are a bigger rider and you need that performance, you need that range, you need that speed, you want that durability, you want that great customer service, and you want that good stability, this board is really a no-brainer. Under $1,600 is just a ridiculous, ridiculous amount of value. Now, if you're utilizing the new Gear Drive 2-in-1 kit, I think that's even more crazier of a value because as you guys know, I love 2-in-1s. I love switching up wheels, whether it's an AT wheel going from a seven inch to a six inch, or I wanna change from an ABEC to a Kegel, whether it's a mad wheel or go back to a traditional cloud wheel. I love all the options. The more options, the better. And with the new Mad Wheels version two, you get the comfort, you get the grip, you get the range and much better price than all its competition. Thank you for watching guys. Please comment, like, share, subscribe. Have a good one guys.